Hello guys, thanks for coming back. Today I want to show you a new board that allows to interface the Raspberry Pi or other single board computers to the outside world. This scheme provides a complete solution with ESD protection which can be used for a robot or vending machine. Let me describe some of the features. First we have the power section which can take a voltage input from 4 to 18 volts DC so you can power your SBC directly from your supply. This power section also features a backup circuit so power can be shut off and your SBC has some time to properly shut down. More on that in a bit. Next we have the 6 GPIO sync PWM outputs with up to 200 milliamps per pin. Then there are the 6 digital inputs that can also read 10 bit analog levels. Here we have both I2C and RS485 transceivers both in the same connector to save a bit of space. Next you can see the I2S audio amplifier and microphone. Here is the SPI port ready for one of those small LCD screens. There are also two user LEDs and of course the standard 40 pin header connection. So as far as I see, we got a ULN2003 for the PWM outputs an I2C 80 tiny slave to handle the real time IO pins. Very importantly, here, an accelerometer and gyro unit so your robot can have some balance or your bending machine can detect motion. There's also a real time clock to keep the date and time, as most SBCs don't have this. The original idea for this was to make a small hat only for the Pi Zero but it was too tight and not all the features would fit in here. In particular, the power backup and proper SPI connection. But let me know in the comments if this is a format that's still worth pursuing. So the single board computer fits on top of the zero board board. For the full size Raspberry Pi, a flex adapter is pretty straightforward. I will show that next time. You just need to put some standoffs underneath. Also, the 80 tiny microcontroller is reprogrammable through the pads on the back. This way, you can create your own modified code. Additionally, if you want to put the board side to side with your SBC, I've made this turnaround board. You still need to test it, but this should help when you already have all the boards or fans stacked. Or you can even make your own PCB adapter for boards that don't follow the same 40 pin order. Now let me demonstrate the power backup feature. You can connect a small LiPo battery or a supercapacitor, which will charge from the main power supply. Once you disconnect, the backup will provide about 5 seconds so you can save any configuration file and enter idle mode before power is shut down. This will give you a chance to properly stop them and avoid any SD card corruption issues. This is even powerful enough to sustain the Banana Pi board, which is known to consume quite a lot of power. Here the banana pie is already up and running. And there, power shut down. Alright, so everything goes into the assembly with some 2.5M 6mm standoffs and screws. Now remember the input voltage can go from 4 volts to 18 volts. In this case we can very conveniently use a 12 volt motorcycle battery. Alright, so we can now test some of the other features. For this we have the HDMI cable and a wireless keyboard and pad. Right, so this is the first time I showcase this ZeroBot OS. This is based on Raspbian and has been made with the great help of Alexander Manishwick. Really, really good help. The kernel does a minimal load and your application starts running in about 10 seconds, while the desktop starts at about the 45 second mark. On the desktop, you can find three folders. 
The startup folder has a shortcut for your application to run automatically. The setup folder has all the things related to configuring the peripherals and the projects folder has all the code examples in C. The first thing we'll check is the I2C peripheral. The I2C scan command easily shows us what's on the bus. You can see the addresses for the AT Tiny, the accelerometer, and the real-time clock. If there were devices outside past the I2C repeater, we'd be seeing those as well in here. There is an example project to test the real-time clock. Most projects have some comments at the top to show how the system should be configured, although this is already done on this image of the OS. Excuse the image quality guys until I get an HDMI capture device. Next thing we'll test is the SPI peripheral with an LCD screen. We just open up project, remembering that we must do so as root for the SPI to work. Again, we see system configuration instructions, also the setup of the lines and starting the SPI. We basically alternate two buffers with red and green pixels for the screen, but this can just as easily be pictures loaded from the SD card. Alright, now let's see how the I2S audio works. Again, many thanks to Alexander for helping with this configuration. We use the A record command to start capturing with the onboard Yetsu microphone. And we use the A play command to verify this. Note that this test is with an 8 ohm speaker, but the amplifier can actually move twice the power. Last thing today is the RS485 port. Again, we have a project for this. A GPIO line is needed to set the direction of the 485 transceiver, and we also use the UART, of course. Running this, it will start sending a test string via the wires into another transceiver into the PC. On the PC, we use the PuTTY program to verify this. Transmission is pretty fast now, but it can be a lot faster than this. And of course, the buses have duplex. So you can send commands or strings to your machine as well. So as far as the location, the size of the board is very convenient to place it within the head of your robot or your bending machine. Also a 3D printed case would be real nice for this as well. This is all very encouraging since the bill of materials is under 20 bucks, so we'll take it from there. Alright guys, so I will make a small revision of this board to change a couple of components and test some more. I will showcase the GPIO input and output features on the next video, as well as anything we didn't cover today. Please comment, like and subscribe. And again, thanks for watching.